morning, everyone, and welcome to today's uh, Wi-Fi 360 Prime interview. I have the pleasure to welcome Paul Milkinson, CEO of Aptilo Networks, uh, to discuss some issues around Wi-Fi monetization and, in particular, Wi-Fi calling. In September 2014, T-Mobile pioneered the next generation Wi-Fi calling by supporting Apple's enabled native Wi-Fi iPhone 6. Uh, and this is a paradigmatic shift for Wi-Fi calling as it is implemented with native support embedded in the smartphones and working seamlessly through any Wi-Fi connections. Good morning, Paul. How are you? Good morning, Alain. Uh, thanks. I am very good. Uh, we have a lot of snow in Stockholm just now, so we are perfectly fine. Well, I'm, I'm, I imagine at this time of the year. So uh, why don't you uh, give the audience an update on Aptilo Networks and what you guys are up to? Sure, sure. Uh, as I'm, I'm sure some of you know, Aptilo Network is a, a Swedish headquartered company with, with offices around uh, both in Americas and, and Asia and the Middle East. Uh, and we are specialized on service management and, and offloading Wi-Fi service management specifically. And with that, I mean uh, access to service control, billing and charging control, and also portal analytics uh, that is related to to enable a Wi-Fi network uh, specifically. Uh, we have some more than more than 120 customers around the world today, and um, counting as we are speaking, we are adding customers. Uh, um, last year, I think we added some 10, 12 new operator customers, so we have had a good speed and and pace on that. Uh, and uh, we are providing a, a traditional software uh, solution, so operator are buying our solution and, and uh, operate it themselves. But we also have a cloud or managed service uh, that uh, some 25 to 30 percent of our customers are utilizing. Uh, so we can offer it both as a traditional software solution and also cloud solution. So uh, that's Subtilo in, in, in short. Okay, great. So uh, why don't we dive and tell, uh, if you can tell us, you know, how has uh, Wi-Fi offloading evolved in, in the last 18 months from your perspective? Uh, sure. I, I think there has been a lot of development in the market, uh, as you said, for the last one and a half to two years. Uh, if we go back some two years, offloading was really a uh, uh, something that everyone started to talk about and a lot of the operators started to, to look into and to deploy uh, more aggressively Wi-Fi and also mechanisms for offloading. And when we talk about offloading, often people are relating offloading to, to a kind of a, a methodology or mechanism called EPSIM or an automatic offloading. So your devices, your phones or your, your tablets that has a SIM card can automatically be offloaded. Um, in the initial phase, it was all about just to get away from the 3G networks, the overloaded, from a traffic point of view, overloaded networks, and to be releasing those networks and putting the traffic into the Wi-Fi network. Uh, today, uh, and, and what have happened is that for the last a year or so, uh, we have taken the second step of, of, of that and, and we are going into more an intelligent offloading. It's not only about getting rid of the traffic from one network to another, but also having more of a right-sizing philosophy and to utilize the different RAM components, both the Wi-Fi network and the 3G and the LTE network in a more optimized way. So it's a, a, it's a more in a harmony and, and a lot of provider talks about heterogeneous network, which means that you have your different networks and you can then use them in, in a wise way, in an optimized way. And that means that you need to understand when should you place a user and the user's traffic into Wi-Fi and when should you keep them in the free DLT network or maybe even move them away from Wi-Fi. into the 3D network. So I think that that kind of traffic steering and intelligent offloading is, is really an important part uh, of the evolution of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi calling has been around for quite a long time when you're talking about making use of a Wi-Fi network and a device like a smartphone or a PC or a, a tablet. And, and obviously that is not the, what we now today refer to as the next generation. Uh, so 
uh, in, as you said in your introduction here, that T-Mobile back in September launched in, in the, at the same time as the iPhone 6 came out, that they're going to, to introduce the, the, the next generation Wi-Fi calling or the native Wi-Fi calling. And what is that is, is about is that the device in itself is natively capable of handling Wi-Fi calling and also voice over LTE, uh, Volte, and having call transfer between the Wi-Fi and the LTE network. And uh, that as a difference to what you had before, when you needed to either add a third party application uh, on your phone, and you could see different operators had done that long time back. I mean, T-Mobile had Wi-Fi calling uh, already before the iPhone 6, uh, but not in the same way from, from a, a technical point of view, so to say. And you have seen a number of operators deploying Wi-Fi calling in that way with third-party applications. You've also seen a number of operators like Free UK and, and Sprint and BT previously have had separate voice of IP or SIP dive clients or applications that they provided. And that is also a way of providing voice over Wi-Fi. But I would say that the big difference now is that when you natively have the support in the client and you also have the full call transfer so that you can walk between the different networks and utilize them in the, in the most optimal way. And you also are using a, the, the native kind of dialer that is included in the phone. And you can see here on, on the slide you have now uh, on, on the display that you're actually using, uh, in, in this case it's the iPhone 6, where you are enabling the Wi-Fi call and you're using the same dialer and you're using your same phone number. So this is really taking a step uh, away from having something separately that needed to, to support Wi-Fi call standalone. And now it's kind of totally integrated in your everything from your device and also into your yeah. core, uh, from your core element. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, as you see here, also supported by the picture, I mean, and if you know up till the since before, as I said, we have more than 15 years of experience to provide and help more than 100 operators and carry of doing advanced Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi offloading. And uh, what has been a signum for Aptilo is not only to have a kind of a AAA and a policy engine, but also having what we call additional smarts. It means that that we try to pre-include and pre-integrate functionality and support for a lot of different uh, features and behaviors that is needed in, in the reality, in real life, so to say. And, and one example is with the traditional offloading in eSIM, where we have the capability of, of adding on intelligent policy lookups and so on, on top of the, the kind of rudimentary eSIM authentication. The same way we are thinking around Wi-Fi calling, so we are the free DPP compliant AAA node that is handling the interaction to down to the EPDG and to the P gateway and also up to the HSS which is the database where you have your subscriber. So those kind of basic scenarios in Wi-Fi calling we are definitely supporting. But not, not only that, we are also on top of that then adding on the capability of, of supporting Wi-Fi calling not only for device with SIM card but also for non-SIM devices which means that you can address a much broader number of devices out there, a lot of the operators today are kind of pushing a lot of tablets and so on, and the majority is still without a SIM card in them. Either they are not SIM card enabled, or the user is not putting an or provisioning and a SIM card into it. So it's it, it's it, by de facto it's a non-SIM device. Uh, so that is a big portion of the number of devices out there. So, so that's going to be very important to also support non-SIM devices. In some scenarios you may have a, a need of different policy lookups. You need to, to treat the user depending on where they are, when they are there, and what kind of user profile they have. And that means that you also need to be capable of, of uh, looking for information in different places, in your customer databases, in your AAA nodes, in your PCR for policy nodes. And we can do that and combine that information to make intelligent policies and then push them down to the network elements. So we are not only supporting the, the basic scenarios, but on, on, on top of that, a lot of, of additional smarts. And I think that that's really what's going to be required in real-time deployments when we see them coming. Uh, uh, this is the, great. In, uh, okay. in, in, in and, and of course, the next step beyond Wi-Fi calling is also monetizing in different ways. Can you give us a very, and within 30 seconds, uh, what, what's your vision uh, for monetizing Wi-Fi beyond offloading and calling? Mm. 
uh, also a, a good question, and I mean, we 30 seconds is always hard, but I will try. So we have seen a, a, a very big need of a lot of among a lot of operators to really add something on top of today's kind of. Uh, I mean, when an operator today signs contracts with a venue owner, could be a hotel, uh, an airport, and so on, the, the, the normal proposition has been that I come here, I, I put my stuff here, my access points, and I, I make it possible for your kind of customers and my customers to connect in this venue. Uh, but as time has passed by, these venue owners are requesting more um, data points, more analytics, more intelligent information, and that has been missing out. So today, for example, there is a lot of, of operators and, and venue owners that is not having the capability of exchanging information on uh, who are actually visiting this network. For a long time, are they connected? What kind of devices are they using? Uh, are they using... Uh, a tablet or a PC or a smartphone, and are they repeating customers? Are they coming back to the same shopping center, or are they coming to only to one-time visitors and so on? And that kind of analytics and information is really valuable, and that is something that is is available and tangible in the Wi-Fi network. And this is something that the venue owner is, is more than happy to to take part of and also maybe even pay for and and that that is an important part for the operator to understand that there is additional kind of information they can provide and sell and make the business case much better in in in, in high harmony with their kind of venue owners and the and, and the people that is owning the places, and that is a, a true source for additional monetization. So I, I, I see that coming, and that's going to be a big thing also during the coming one to two years. Okay, well, it was more than thirty seconds <laughs> so the, the, for your elevator pitch, but, but, but thanks, that, yeah. that's a useful insight. So, what I want to thank you, Paul. It's been a real pleasure to have you today. Uh, just a reminder uh, for the audience that we provide uh, well with Wi-Fi 360 you know, market research and uh, content marketing with uh, outposts such as uh, webinars and this type of interview. So uh, thank you for watching this interview and please stay tuned for the next one. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.